Hi, my name's Alice and I'm a psychology research assistant working with the Health and Care Research Wales funded National Centre for Mental Health or NCMH and I'll be talking today about the work that I've been fortunate to be involved in as part of a collaboration between NCMH and Dr Neil Roberts and Professor Jonathan Bisson from the Traumatic Stress Research Group based at Cardiff University. Also in collaboration with experts across the globe this work is contributing to the development of validated measures for post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, and complex PTSD, as defined by the 11th revision of the International Classification of Diseases, otherwise known as ICD-11. So firstly, to provide a bit of context, the International Classification of Diseases is published by the World Health Organization, and designed to provide a common vocabulary for diagnosing and recording health-related problems globally. ICD is widely used in both clinical and research settings and can assist with informing how to programme health services, allocate healthcare spending and invest in research and development. The most recent revision, ICD-11, was published in 2018. Aims of the revisions included improving the clinical utility of diagnoses, through the application of clear, concise diagnostic criteria, which can be easily translated into different languages and which have a high degree of specificity for symptoms. These revisions were particularly significant for the diagnostic criteria for PTSD and also saw the recognition of a sibling disorder, complex PTSD. PTSD or complex PTSD may be diagnosed in individuals experiencing a particular set of symptoms following exposure to a traumatic event, defined by ICD-11 as events that are extremely threatening or horrific in nature. The PTSD criteria, as outlined here, includes six symptoms spread over three symptom clusters. These include re-experiencing the trauma in the here and now, in the form of nightmares or powerful or distressing memories or flashbacks, Avoidance of internal or external reminders of the trauma, such as thoughts, feelings, people, places or situations. And hyperarousal, characterised by a persistent sense of ongoing threat and manifesting as feeling a need to be on guard, super alert or watchful or being easily startled. So for example, a survivor of a serious car accident may be diagnosed with PTSD if they experience impairing symptoms such as flashbacks in which they feel like the accident is happening again. They avoid travelling in a car or thinking about the accident and they are especially vigilant around traffic. The recognition of complex PTSD reflects a long-held understanding that some survivors of trauma develop the core symptoms of PTSD in addition to a more persistent and pervasive pattern of problems referred to as a disturbance in self-organisation. This concerns an additional set of six symptoms spread over three symptom clusters, including problems with effect regulation or managing emotions, manifesting as either heightened or diminished emotional reactions, having persistently negative thoughts about oneself, such as feeling like a failure or feeling worthless or inferior compared to others, and disturbed relationships characterised by feeling distant or cut off from others, or having difficulty staying emotionally close to others. So for example, a survivor of a sexual assault may be diagnosed with PTSD if they experience recurrent upsetting nightmares about the assault, they avoid thinking about it or people who remind them of what happened, and they notice that they've become particularly jumpy or are easily startled. They may be diagnosed with complex PTSD if they also develop impairing symptoms reflecting a disturbance in self-organisation, such as often alternating between being very easily emotional and feeling shut down or numb emotionally, persistently feeling worthless, defeated or shameful about what happened to them, and having problems trusting or feeling close to others as a result. So screening and diagnostic tools such as validated questionnaires and interviews, can have a crucial role in the appropriate diagnosis of psychiatric disorders, including PTSD and complex PTSD, and can consequently enable signposting to evidence-based treatments. They also have an important role in outcome monitoring, as well as in research to better understand psychiatric disorders and assist with establishing more effective treatments. The ICD-11 revisions to the criteria for PTSD 
and the recognition of complex PTSD created a pressing need for such measures. The Traumatic Stress Research Group, alongside colleagues across the globe, have been working to establish such tools, including the International Trauma Questionnaire and the International Trauma Interview. The International Trauma Questionnaire, or ITQ, is a self-report questionnaire consisting of 12 items which measure the core symptoms of ICD-11, PTSD and complex PTSD. A particular strength of the ITQ is that it's brief and simply worded, and consistent with the aims of ICD-11, this ensures it can be easily translated into different languages. Simple scoring rules also enable the ITQ to be easily administered in both clinical and research settings. So as part of a collaboration with other researchers in the UK, a diverse sample of trauma-exposed individuals recruited through NCMH and the Cardiff and Vale University Health Board Traumatic Stress Service assisted with research which demonstrated the ITQ's good psychometric properties and established it as a valid diagnostic tool. Research conducted by the Traumatic Stress Research Group using the ITQ has also helped to further evaluate the construct validity of ICD-11, PTSD and complex PTSD. This is important as it provides evidence to show that the new ICD-11 criteria accurately reflect different sets of impairing symptoms observed in a significant minority of trauma-exposed individuals. The ITQ is now freely available and has been translated into 24 languages for use in different populations around the world and there's also a version tailored for children and adolescents. Research using the ITQ has contributed to a better understanding of PTSD and complex PTSD. For example, the Traumatic Stress Research Group have used the ITQ to identify potential therapeutic targets for complex PTSD, including self-compassion and social support. This is particularly important given that there is currently a lack of evidence-based treatments for complex PTSD. The ITQ has therefore clearly had important clinical and research implications since its development. Face-to-face -face interviews are, however, considered superior for psychiatric diagnosis. The researchers who developed the ITQ have therefore since developed the International Trauma Interview, or ITI. The ITI is a semi-structured clinical interview consisting of 12 items which assess for the core symptoms of PTSD and complex PTSD. These items reflect those in the ITQ, however the ITI enables a more in-depth exploration of symptoms. Research conducted in Sweden has already shown promise for the usefulness of the ITI, however more research is needed in order to further establish it as a valid measure. To assist with this, the Traumatic Stress Research Group, in collaboration with NCMH and the Cardiff and Vale Traumatic Stress Service, are aiming to recruit a diverse sample of 100 trauma-exposed adults to take part in research interviews using the ITI. Administering these interviews has been an important part of my role um, and having begun the validation work in October of last year, to date we've administered 33 interviews. In March, recruitment unfortunately had to be put on hold due to the COVID crisis, um, but we are currently in the process of obtaining approvals to complete the interviews over Zoom. Should this validation work demonstrate that the ITI has similarly good diagnostic capabilities as the ITQ, it has the potential to become the global interview measure of choice for ICD-11, PTSD and complex PTSD. Arguably, such research should be a current priority, especially given the global psychological impact of the pandemic and the potential for an increase in traumatic stress related to this. So thank you for listening um, and please feel free to contact me via the email on this slide if you have any questions.